Hello everybody and welcome to another tutorial in camera lens repair and uh, this time I will uh, actually continue with the uh, current Pilar Svita uh, 1.6 and the 10 millimeter in it's the H16RX and it has a very stiff aperture ring so I would like to try to actually fix this uh, there is a lot of oil and old gunky grease in here and if you try to actually turn the the aperture ring it's quite stiff uh, so um, that will be the the next video about this uh, I mean this <laughs> video <laughs> and um, yeah, I would like to try to clean in uh, whatever. So in the blades, uh, the the actual focusing ring behind here, uh, where you can see the small dots in the depth of field scale. And uh, how to come into it? Well, it's almost the same as going into the front lens groups. Uh, I mean, all those that sits uh, ne the front lens group and the uh, next lens group and then the <coughs> the uh, aperture assembly which uh, and uh, it's all the way you take off the aperture ring well <laughs> this uh, lens has a problem the worn out focus ring a focus assembly because somebody else has Working with a hard tool and I mean really damaged. It's really hard to. I mean I tried to actually fix it, but I couldn't. It's simply yeah, not good. But um, let's see what we can do about the aperture assembly. But we need some tools actually. At least one po one point two millimeter flathead screwdriver will be very useful in this case. An old uh, compass or lens tool or whatever you have uh, is also quite handy. Some pieces of rubber, different rubber tools here, um, is very handy in the, when working with those. A small lens sucker will probably also be needed. This old one is a set of, uh, I think it's a 10 different 8 maybe. Eight different, uh, very good. You can get them in different uh, design on the web. Some dentist tool will definitely be uh, useful. And those are old. Uh, I go get in a second hand shop for, well, nothing. Not much, at least. Uh, try to, it has different shapes uh, in different ends. A brush, a fine brush, uh, something like this uh, makeup brush, and I make a little plastic thingy, so I do not have to have the the brush lying on directly on the the well my desk, and you can see here if you if I put it onto something, well it will be uh, have the distance, so it would not be uh, directly with the brush. So it's quite easy to make. Some tweezers can also be very handy and uh, different shapes. I modified this one, which was some kind of this. So it have a different angle than the curved one here. And I think it works pretty good. I will, maybe we can also uh, use some rubberized uh, tweezer. This is a homemade, this is a fabric I mean uh, not fabric it's a factory made uh, tweezer yeah make for stamps collectors now let's jump into it and see what we can do I don't think it's that hard now as the in the the video before to get off the um, the name ring here they're sitting a um, small one very tiny set screw which we need to unscrew i mean we can just loosen it and in that way uh, 
so just a few turns so it will still sit in the in the front ring name ring and I use this uh, rubber piece of rubber from an old turntable to press down the, the actually records um, and it's really good you could also go into the plumber section of the the uh, hardware store and probably get those uh, gasket this is a 66 millimeter gasket and uh, you can get them in many many different uh, shapes and size and so and uh, this the rubber is really sticky so we could actually just try this put it on here and then put some force on it and it will turn very easy and cheap and then you can modify it so that was part of it <laughs> not that um, to actually get the the next uh, the front lens group off there is a tiny hole in here which we can if we turn it get closer to the uh, if we can there it is there you see the little hole um, which actually hold the front lens here in place so you cannot just turn it and in that way we can actually use a screwdriver to put in and unscrew fully the tiny set screw and it's good with a magnetized screwdriver and that way you can pull out the the um, set screw and I put the ring around the little tiny set screw because then I know where it is I mean I have a better view of it now to unscrew it yeah we will actually do the same uh, we can just use this one see if you pull it close put it close to the the actual um, edge and then turn it so and it off well, there was something on here not really anything special so that's it and then the next one <laughs> which um, as you see in the other video uh, I took I get wrong of different holes here uh, it's not that hole so it must be the other one there is a tiny set screw down here which locks lock the uh, this uh, lens group into place so we can just unscrew it and it's I think it's the same size as the other one and uh, we can just pull it out gently and then put it away now set a little mark here uh, so you have an idea of where you actually are in the assemble process you have the index mark down here and you can just set a tiny mark here so you you actually know where it is I mean uh, when you assemble it there could be some issues but I don't think there is now unscrew it with a lens tool uh, tree I mean not a tweezer maybe you could use some of those uh, just like a a plier here but this is a tiny one but maybe you can get a bigger one uh, to actually unscrew it but I prefer the the old uh, compasses here because that what I have in my little workshop and since we get that out it's just clean it and it's amazing how much uh, it helps so and to make it more easy to I mean in a controlled way take it out we'll just use a rubber tool and simply 
do that because and here comes the little tricky part um, what I should mention before so the thing is that um, I should have mentioned it before but there is a tiny little steel ball in here I mean it's extremely tiny so what I've just done uh, I'll just put it on again because it makes sense where it sit uh, when we put it back in again sorry for that but yeah so it is sometimes you see if we look to the the uh, index mark behind here there is a little tiny steel ball so when we take out the uh, the next lens group the second lens group we have to click probably can hear yeah um, I can just pull it out and maybe the steel ball will stick down to here where you probably can see it hopefully you can see it down there this tiny little steel ball is there it's really small so uh, and it sits uh, actually and move on to the little notch here for the click aperture click there is a notch here too and it's actually for the for the little pin that moves the the actual aperture assembly and the blades in here and that's what we are going into and hopefully uh, can make it more smooth in a way now the th the uh, depth of field ring is actually possible to take out gently don't press too much on the side but wiggle it out And then that way it comes loose. Now, <clears throat> it can only sit in one position because if you look here, there is a tiny little, uh, what do we say, a little pin stick out or something. I don't know what it's called in English, but uh, this little pin goes into the oh can we have some focus if you look here this little pin and it's actually where the index mark is so I'll just take out the little tiny tiny steel ball and uh, put it somewhere where I can find it so there and I think there must be a little spring that is even really small and uh, hopefully it will not lose it oh it's tiny I think maybe a dentist tool with a very pointy tip could be useful in that way so if if it's possible to take out it is and it's actually not that small you can see it's not that big hmm. so away with that and now we are actually ready to jump into the nah not yet I will also take off the the uh, focusing ring here 
uh, even if it doesn't work you can see there's a lot of old gunk and dirt and yeah not that good well I will just uh, wipe it away and give it some new even if the focus system <laughs> does not work doesn't matter to me um, and then I think it must be that I don't know because I haven't been into the aperture system yet wow this is really old dirty um, grease so not hmm, not that good so if we move on to the uh, aperture blades itself I think it must be possible to go in there and um, yeah let's see the uh, screw on the side here is actually the one that hold the the aperture blades and the aperture ring in place and uh, if we set it to something like well, we could have it full open I don't know what's best but just to be sure how to put it back in again I think I will make a little, tiny little scratch here there and there so now we know where the aperture ring in here the aperture holding ring I don't know what's name but how should it uh, sit when it's in and then I'll just try to unscrew this yeah it's good just a few turns and the pin is out so <laughs> yeah it will be interesting to see what we're looking into now well since I have it open I will just go into it um, I would think if I can lift up the aperture ring maybe the plate will come with it well I don't know maybe I will use another tweezer maybe this one would be fine and this I think the other one the modified with the bended tip can be useful in this case and in that way take it out uh -huh. then we are into it and I think I will just put it in some isopropyl alcohol 99% and let it stay there a little but let's have a look on the uh, aperture plates itself see how it looks how oh, it's uh, possibly to take it apart the, it looks like the blades are quite long um, so it uh, it goes under the uh, the ring in here you probably can see the blade go under here there's a kind of an edge where it can go through so uh, well I think we'll just take them out and see what we can do um, I would just like to see what's inside here okay the blades are quite long as I mentioned before but how to deal with those well, we're figured out. <laughs> it will be interesting to put them back in again, <laughs> I guess. But that's the uh, challenge of uh, working with that kind of stuff like this. And okay. I think the plates are all the same. Hmm. 
Hmm. Yeah, I think we'll just jump them in on my desk and see there is some kind of oil film down here uh, which makes it a little sticky. And the blades can only sit in one way. I mean, the orientation of them it should face sit like that all the way round. Mm -hmm. So there, and the last one come in. It's fine, let them sit a little. And uh, in between we will use some cotton buds to actually do some cleaning in here of the old. Uh, I mean, somebody would mention maybe I should have done it when I have all the lens elements out. And clean them, yeah, maybe. But um, then I couldn't make another video about this. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so sometimes, um, yeah. I don't know how old that grease is, but it, I think it must be pretty old. Oh, that's... Wow, that's really cheap cotton buds. So there. I think it will be fine when it's done, <laughs> but yeah. So I think okay, and then the outer edge here where the aperture ring goes on. You can also wipe it away this old <laughs> wow really sticky grease yeah and we just do the this one here I think I will just speed up the process here <laughs> when uh, editing the video. There's no idea of. So, and I also take this here. And the last go, I think, would be fine for now. And so there. I think it's fine for now. Now the aperture ring also have to be have a little attention uh, is it possible to watch yeah it is <laughs> yeah there is sitting a little tiny screw here 
on this edge and um, it's actually on we can unscrew this tiny screw out with that different uh, different uh, shape so and in that way we could take this out and I don't think there is anything else it doesn't look like and you see it can only be assembled in one way it cannot sit the opposite way because then uh, the the screw holes here is not in the center so just put it in here and do some more cleaning to make it nice and smooth so we also can get all the old grease away and hopefully get it to work better so now there is also something here on the front <laughs> amazing there and the last go and it looks like it will be pretty good so it can run smooth and the click will be fine I mean it's also the way you can actually de-click the uh, the aperture so if you don't yeah, when you use the this lens for video you could uh, de-click in that way it would be very easy just take out the the very front and the next uh, lens group and then take out the um, aperture ring and then that way take out the little steel ball in the spring put it in a small bag and then you can keep it for uh, for future uh, repair or just restore it back to normal so I think it will be fine for now I mean so and uh, where did it go here And it will be almost like a new lens from <laughs> I mean it will be nice and fine to actually work many years um, from now I would think so I mean the glass element in this lens is actually in good condition so I think it can be very useful maybe I will uh, try to figure out another solution for the focusing assembly buying uh, an old lens uh, <laughs> which is full of dirt and dust and fungus and if I can exchange it for that that would be fine so that's fine for now and uh, then I'll just continue with the blades which is uh, and the inner aperture ring here which also is a little dirty 
with oh gosh <laughs> oh there's really a lot of old uh, grease on this ring so I think it will be fine for now. Of course it has to be dry. Yeah. That's all fine. So and next all the plates. We have to clean. I mean dry. I think the interesting part of this will be how to put the place in again so they will <laughs> they will uh, work it's a bit challenge uh, when those uh, old lenses um, I've tried with different lenses and it can be a little tricky especially because the long blades uh, how do you Put them in in a correct way but i think i uh, well we will make it hmm. there was just a lot of old grease on this plate or maybe it's just old dirt could be yeah but I will just speed up the process so during drying the blades here no idea so
Okay, so now we um, we can continue with putting in the blades and see how it will go. I have no idea, but I'm sure we'll make it in a way. Hmm. And all the blades have to sit the correct way before we putting in in. So, Nope. Now, you see, the more tricky part comes when we need to put the, the blades under those who already sits in place. That's the tricky part. So. Maybe we could bend the blade a little. Now.
So, now I think it should be there, uh, hopefully. And maybe we should just give it a little, little molly coat, I think. Um, just a tiny amount. It will just be a thin film. On the uh, this ring, I think it will be fine. That's it.
Okay. <laughs> After many, some two, three attempts, I uh, actually put the plates in and uh, I think it, it works. So I just need to put in the, the little pin here. Uh, we we'll just need to have it magnetized. This 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 is just a magnet, and when you slide it against the screwdriver, it should be magnetized. And if you want to demagnetize, well, you use this. And hopefully, it yeah, it sticks to it. So hopefully, yeah, it took a little longer than I expect. So sometimes it happens that way. But hopefully we we'll managed to put it in. Mm -hmm. It's a bit tricky, this one here. can tell. So, Oof. wow, it was really tricky to put in, but uh, now we have a working. The way it works is that um, when you put in the plates it has to be put, putting under each other uh, I mean the first the first uh, well, let's say I think there's how many plates are there actually uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten the first uh, around seven eight plates uh, you just put them in and um, but the two or three the last of them uh, you need to put under I mean you to put it under some another blade but and, uh, at the same time you have to hold on somewhere with it in, in between and um, in that way hold it and with the uh, tweezer, put it, uh, put the next one under, and align them in a way. So it's, I mean, it's, uh, it would take too long to show here, but there, uh, yeah, I mean, it, 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 uh, it works as it should, which I'm quite happy with. So there. And it's open as a suit. So, yeah, that's it. Um, I'll just put the the next uh, lens element in. I mean, from the just give it a little fresh air, <laughs> and we can just close the aperture. So it will uh, not get that much dirt into it, into the lens element. I just wonder where does all those bloody hair, small hairs, came from? I have no idea. Now, <laughs> we're not done yet. Um, we we'll need to put on the um, the uh, the little spring and the steel ball and the the I mean the the focusing ring and you can just give it a little uh, a little um, just a little grease in here doesn't have to be much. 
so there is already something on and then pop it on I mean mine does not work so it's not a problem um, yeah and uh, where is the depth of field ring now I think we just put the tiny spring on first oh where did it go here is really really tiny wow reminds me of something a watch but we will put it in here put it into the hole and we will have some tiny amount of uh, grease here so it will stick to it so just a little and then get the steel ball in it's extremely small something like that and I think it will it will it will sit there as you might see so and what's next the oh yeah the uh, aperture ring itself and we'll just give it a little something like grease and uh, we have to do the the grease here on the inside of the not not here I mean in this area but more into that area here so I think it's fine for now and then we can pop in the depot field ring has to sit correct it will be something like that as you can see and then the little screw that goes in there pop it's a small thing with a magnetized screwdriver line it into the hole here and we can just put it in so now there <laughs> and next uh, yeah we also have to put in the actual depot field ring you know the one with the holes in drop something just have it looking nice with some isopropyl alcohol and um, so there It should be something like that. Fine for now. I mean, what do you expect of a lens that is something, I mean, very old? Now, we have the little, the little pin here. And it goes into the notch here. So we can just pop it in. Only. 
and I mean it has been there before so it can come in again and then it's in so nice and fine and then the notch this notch here goes over the pin here and uh, don't turn it when you put it on it will uh, so there and uh, just have to catch the correct the correct place and then it goes in now next thing is uh, we put on the second uh, the second uh, lens group by using a Rubber tool, where is it? Here. On here. It'll be number two. So, put it over and turn it a little backward. So hopefully it can catch the, the thread. So, there. Yeah, it's not the correct one. What's going on here? Well, we can turn it by pressing on it. Difficult to get in. Click. Now we have it. As we should, and then then we can screw it in. That's really good. But of course, if you only want to de-click it, it should be quite easy to just take, uh, I mean, the front. It should be very easy to do. And then I will just put in the this screw. And yeah, it must be something like that. So, gently tighten it and just then the next one should just go in and uh, we should have it somewhere. There it is, but I think we'll just uh, tighten it more, uh, a bit more, I think. So, that's fine. Catch the hole where it should be. You see, it's right here. I'll just grab the tiny, tiny screw and put it in through the hole there gently tighten it 
Whew. Then the name ring comes on. And we can also do that. Give it a little tighten. So that's it. And screw it in. So now we have a much better and much lighter. Wow. So now this is good. It has a much better click if you want that, but of course if you don't want that, you can just, uh, I mean, uh, de-click it in a way, simple way. So that's it. Well, it takes, it took really t way too long and uh, I will cut away, I mean, I have cut away part of it. So that's all. Hope you can use the info. Bye bye.